it sucks, man. I really wanted that to work out, but I'm not going to be abused. The reason why people don't change is because people make excuses for them. Oh, it's tracks on my seat. It's a good opportunity. It's this and that. People's abusive behavior or disrespectful behavior doesn't change because people make excuses for them. I don't want to be one of those people. I love Trax NYC's brand. I love his videos. I love covering the Diamond District. I love Trax. I don't like Max. The only thing that stays consistent is the grind. Keep on grinding. Um, I don't know if you saw, there was a video that I posted. Uh, it's called uh, Celebrating Valentine's Day. I have it on my channel. Yeah. And the girl in that video, I was at her apartment when Trax NYC called me for the first time. I was on her bed. We were laying next to each other and you know, we were, you know, we had fun or whatever. So we were laying next to each other and my phone went off. And when my phone went off, you, you know, I, I didn't recognize the numbers. Hey, it's Trax or whatever. It, it's, it's me, it's Trax. I'm like, oh, hey, I sit up, right? The, the girl in the video, her name is, I don't want to say her name, but she was on my chest. She was laying on my chest. I, I did this. I pushed off me. I said, hey. What's what's going on? He goes, hey, it's me. So uh, it's me, Trax. I saw your YouTube videos. Um, I'm, I I find them very entertaining. You posted one video that I don't that I, I'm really not okay with. I said, oh, what what video? What video was that? So then he says you posted a video, and the title of that video was called "Is Trax NYC Racist?" I did post a video like that. Okay. I don't know if you saw it. So um, I posted that video, and in that video, uh, it was a it was a clip of Noah and Trax. They were on Instagram, and they were arguing back and forth. It was about ten minutes long, yeah. and in that video, Noah says, and I quote: "The reason why I stopped working with you in the first place was because you said you didn't want to work with black people anymore. But instead of saying black people, he used the, the N word. When right. he said this, Trax didn't respond. He just stood quiet. So." You know, I saw that and I was like, oh, this is good content. Let me just make a video out of it. And asked, I stood completely neutral in that video. And I just asked the audience, what do you guys think? And uh, within three days, that video got about 5,000 views. And which is pretty good because my channel at the time, I only had like 500 subscribers. Right. So I guess it was popping up on the, the recommended of everybody's like uh, YouTube page. So you know, I, and I'm looking at the comments and everybody is shitting on tracks. And I it makes sense why he called me. So right. that was probably the that was the primary reason why Tracks NYC reached out to me. And then after he told me, he's like, if you don't mind, can, can you just maybe consider deleting that video? You know, I also wanted to maybe see if you and I could work together and collab as well. So when he said this, I actually got excited. I was like, oh yeah, totally. As, a matter, as soon as we end this phone call, I'm gonna delete the video right away. So I was cool about it. I didn't want to damage his company or anything. So I get, you know, I, as soon as we get off the phone, I delete the video. He said, can you show up on Monday? I go on Monday. I said, yeah, okay, of course. I show up on Monday. I see him, but I don't know what I was going to ask him yet. Um, prior to me going up to the lounge area, the lounge area is called the Mez, where you have the couches and everything. That's kind of where he makes all his videos when he's yelling in the camera and stuff. Humble yourself! And then I go upstairs and I wait there for him. I see him. We do the video. I'm asking him a bunch of basic questions. It was all good. I was very excited. He gave me a free go chain um, that that's worth around $300, which by the way, I don't care about the money or anything like that. It was just the, the fact that he was so kind to me. And in the video, I mentioned that I didn't understand why he was so nice to me. It wasn't because I feel like somebody should treat me like trash. It was because i have used to seeing him yelling on camera and he's yelling at his employees all the time. So I'm like, I was kind of like giving him the side eye mentally. I'm like, right. is, is this guy really like this? I didn't feel that at all. Now, with the first time I met Max, he didn't do anything wrong. He was actually being very nice. But there was a gut feeling. Something inside of me was like, I don't know. I was like in my head, I was side eyeing him. I felt like I was like giving him the side eye a little bit. I didn't know why at the time, but now I guess maybe it was just. I kind of deep down knew like this guy's probably gonna yell at me at some point. He invites me back. So he's like, "Hey, come, come on by whenever. We we can do a video together." So then I texted him the next day. I said, "Hey, I would like to do a video, uh, showing off diamond earrings." I have a very good friend of mine. Um, she works with me at my job, and she's a fan of tracks as well. So I said, "Hey, I'm gonna get you some diamond earrings as a gift since I'm working over there now, right?" So I go over there, and. Uh, I tell Trax, I want to do a video showing off all your diamond earrings. The video on my channel is called Trax NYC Reviews Diamond Earrings. And in the video, is me and him standing next to each other. I go to meet him, right? As soon as I get up to the to the mez, the lounge area, you see all the couches and stuff. 
immediately I see him pretty much like kind of yelling at his employees, right? I didn't, I was like, he ain't talking to me, so who cares? So I, I you know, I, 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 I sit down and I kind of wait for him. He, he's, he, he says, hey, Brandon, so what are we doing today? I purchased a pair of diamond earrings that were $200. They were very, very tiny. And I say, hey, I got this for a friend. I kind of want to get your opinion on it on camera while we review the other earring. He says, yeah, let's do it. But first, I want to upgrade these for you. I want to give you a bigger pair. So he takes it to the back. He gives me a bigger pair of earrings. I gave those, gave those pair of earrings to my friend because I promised it to her. But we do the video. Video turned out great, I think. It's still on my channel. And then he tells me, come back when you want to do an interview. You should interview me. I said, yeah, I would love to do that. I drop a video the following week asking my subscribers, I'm going to be doing a Q&A. And I tagged you in it too. Like whatever question you want to you want me to ask Trax, let me know. And I'll ask it to, you know, I'll ask Trax NYC. So then I got the questions. I printed it out. Went on over to Trax NYC. I had never done an interview on anybody before. I, I didn't have any any equipment or whatever. So I called Mickey. Mickey gave me his number the first time we met. And I told Mickey, I was like, Mickey, do you have a tripod or something that I can use to interview Max? And he says, yes, he actually had one. And I was calling Mickey, trying to figure out how to use this thing. And while I'm on the phone with Mickey, Max walks in. Max is immediately in a bad mood. He is pissed off. I politely, I look up at him. I'm sitting on the couch. I look up at him as he's walking through the door. I say, hey, Max, um, I'm just sitting up here. Whenever you're ready, we can just start the interview. He looks at me. He goes, give me a fucking second. Give me a fucking second. God, you guys are driving me fucking crazy around here. Me, I'm like, the fuck is this guy's problem? Whatever. I shook it off, right? Mentally. And I, was, yeah. I kept the poker face. I was like, okay, no problem. So he goes, just give me a second. I'm going to sit down. I'm going to eat for a little while. I was like, okay, yeah, no problem. Just take your time. Yeah, I'm just... Just trying to, you know, just let me know where you want to do the interview. He goes, we'll figure it out. He goes, he starts call he goes, starts yelling at his other employees over something that I don't understand. I don't know why he was yelling at them. But at this point, like, I just, I felt a little uncomfortable, but it wasn't that big of a deal. So he's sitting there, he's eating, he's taking his time. When I said take his time, he literally took his time. He was right. sitting there eating soup. He, he ate soup for about 20 minutes. So I, <laughs> and, and the soup was like, it wasn't like a big bowl. It was like a really small bowl. Again, I'm not trying to rush him. So I go to the back to where he was sitting at and trying to lighten the mood. I pull out my phone and you can still see it on my channel in the Q&A video. I'm like, the fans want to know what you're eating. The That video, if you notice in that video, it got cut. Yeah. And I, I, he started yelling at me. This dude answered the question. He said, He's, I said, so he started describing the soup. He said, it's a borscht soup. I got it adjacent over here. You know, Brandon, didn't I fucking tell you to, I didn't want to do the interview? Give me a fucking say. He starts yelling at me. He goes in on me, right? Bro, I wanted to walk out, bro. I was like, I can't, st I, like, I was like, man, I don't even want to interview this guy anymore, man. Fuck these comments. I don't know. I don't care what questions these people have for him. I didn't want to do it. But anyways, I sit there. He finishes eating his, his stupid soup. He he finally ad addresses me. And he says, he says, all right, Brandon, uh, um, how are we gonna do this? You have a tripod? I was like, yeah, but I'm not sure how to use it. This dude called me, he was like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. Humble yourself! He grabs it, he attaches the phone to it. And then he's like, how fucking hard was that? And I'm looking at him, I'm like, I'm not a violent person, bro. You could kind of see it all in right. me. I, right. I wanted to I want I wanted to knock him out, bro. I was like, yo, I'ma knock this guy out. Like I was I was so he's like he he's like how fucking hard was that? And I was like, exactly by reaction. I said, Okay, would you like to do the interview in your office or would you like to do the interview here? He goes, So let's go up to my office. It's fucking loud out here. So we go up to his office, right? When we go up to his office, there was two people already sitting in his office. I don't know who these people were. I think they worked they obviously worked for him because they were in his office. He tells he kicks them out. Literally, he literally tells him, fuck out of my office. So at this point, I am thinking, I'm like, I thought Trax NYC was like this only on camera. This guy's right. a dick. Like I was like, this guy's a so. But I'm not gonna like I'm already here. I came all this way. I've been waiting for him for like 30 minutes. So you know what? You know, I live in Brooklyn, so I came all the way to the Diamond District. That's about 45 minutes away. I'm like, I'm not gonna leave now. Let me just do the video. So I do the video, all my enthusiasm went out the window. I'm like, I didn't even want to, I wasn't even enthused about doing it. 
So I did the video. The video on my channel was about 20 minutes long. Um, and I, regardless of how I, upset I was, I tried my best to just made him, make him look like, paint him in a more positive light. So as, after the video was over, he was like, Brandon, you got a, you got a lot you need to work on and stuff like that. I'm in my head. I'm like, man, I don't even work for you, dude. Like, yeah. is, I'm not even one of your employees. So I'm like, this guy's talking to me like I got to work on, I mean, I don't, you crazy as hell. So I just, I was like, okay, immediately, as soon as the video was over, I grab my bag and I leave. I don't even, I don't make conversation with him whatsoever. I text him again and I tell him, hey, Valentine's Day is coming up. I think it will be a good video idea for us to go over affordable gifts because most of my subscribers cannot afford twenty, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 stuff. So let's go over stuff that's under $1,000. That's what I told him. Did we do that? No. In the video, he's showing stuff that are more than that. That's, that's very expensive. So I didn't care, I, you know, whatever. So we get to, I get to him. We're making our way downstairs and we're going to, you know, you know, the little tables where you see all the jewelry displays at. When, standing behind one of those tables, you see Peter. Peter's standing there. Peter sees me and Max making our way over there. And he sees Mickey walking with us too. Mickey is with us. He has a camera ready. So Peter looks at us and he's like, oh, they're about to make a video. Let me get out the way. That's what Peter was thinking. As soon as Peter walks off, Max goes in on him. You fucking idiot. Nigga, just saying the N word, just going in on him, cursing at him. Mickey was getting ready to start, hit the record button. As soon as he started yelling, Mickey just put the camera down and just looked at him with a blank face. Just like that. And I, me, I'm like, I didn't understand why he was upset. It made logical sense for Peter to walk off. I didn't yeah. know Peter was going to be in the video. I didn't ask for Peter to be in the video. By the way, Peter, very nice guy. Peter, great guy. By the way, all the employees there are super, super nice. Okay. But I didn't... I, I didn't I didn't know Peter was gonna be in the video. I thought it was just gonna be me and Max. So I was just as confused as Peter. So when Peter tried to walk off, he's just he's just cursing at him for like three minutes straight. Three minutes is a long time if somebody's just chewing you out, like nonstop. If you set a timer and just have me curse at you for three minutes straight, that's a long ass time. This guy's just going in on him. And I'm looking, you know, I'm standing there, I'm looking to the side, and I'm looking over at Mickey, and Mickey is just not phased by it. Mickey's just staring at him. It's like they're used to it. It's like Regular behavior. Behind Peter, you see the girls that also work there. They're sitting down behind a computer, you know, processing, whatever. They didn't even flinch. They didn't even turn around. They didn't look at it. They're not surprised by it. It's like being on a New York City subway train and there's crazy people and nobody's paying attention to it. That's how I would describe it. They don't pay any mind to him. And I was impressed. I was like, because not only am I not used to being in that situation. And by the way, some people, I had a friend. He made an argument. He says, Weren't you in the military? Shouldn't you be used to getting yelled at? First of all, it is a difference. That's a life and death situation. This is a fucking jeweler. Like, what the right. hell? And, I, and <laughs> that's one. Two, before you sign a contract to join the Army, they tell you this shit. Three, after you graduate from basic training, a.k.a. boot camp, the yelling kind of stops. They don't talk to you this way. So they actually talk to you like a human being. This guy tracks. I'm like, I didn't understand why the hell he was yelling at Peter. Peter is a big dude. He looks like he could body slam Max. And... Peter spoke to Max like like a like a puppy, like he was just like, I didn't know, I didn't know you you didn't tell me anything. I was just, I thought you wanted me to. I'm like, dude, this guy better be getting paid like three hundred k a minute. Like I don't That's know how to, how much is he paying this guy? Because I'm, he wasn't even talking to me, and I wanted to, I was ready to just walk off. I was like, this guy is such a nasty person, and. I was like, that's so, so disgusting. So then we, he finishes chewing out Peter and he's telling Peter, you fucking work here. Why the hell would you walk off? If you see a camera, you stand in front of it. I don't give a fuck if you're not saying anything. Oh, you fuck. You guys are just retards here. Then he stops yelling at Peter, looks over at Mickey. Then he looks over at me. Mickey put the mic on my sweater that I'm wearing there. Apparently, Mickey put the mic the incorrect way. I didn't know how what the correct way was, but apparently he put it too low. So okay. Max grabbed the mic and he adjusted it. And then he looked over at Mickey. He said, fucking retarded. You nobody does anything right around here. And I am, dude, I am feeling, I'm already uncomfortable and I don't even want to do the video anymore. And by the way, this is the second time that he has not only barked at me, I've seen him bark at his employees. I'm like, I don't even want to, like... I was like, yeah, I'm not getting paid to do this fucking video. So I was like, I was upset. Right. right.
but I brushed it off. At least I tried because I'm looking around. I the, immediately I look around to see everybody's reaction. I'm like nobody else is phased by it. So let me just let me brush it off and let me not say even say anything. So I take a deep breath. Mickey gives the head nod that he started recording. On our y'all, this is Brandon with Tracks NYC, and I'm here with Tracks himself. Today we're going to be taking a look at the most affordable items that you guys can get on TracksNYC.com. And I start the video, and I try to get into character, and I start talking. And Peter does the same thing. Peter, shout out to him. Great job. He gets into character as well. We do the video. The video ends. As soon as the video ends, uh, Max kind of like puts his hand on his head. He, you know, he, he's like, "You got your video. You good? All right, all right, good. Is there anything else you needed?" Like he just looked and annoyed. I'm like, "Nope." We're good here. I'm gonna go upstairs. I'm gonna get my bag. Thank you for your time, Mickey. Thanks a lot, bro. Mickey was like, "No problem." So I go upstairs. I grab my bag and I leave. You about a week after that, right? I don't even contact him. The video slowed down. I think you noticed like in the beginning when I first met Max, I was dropping video after video after video after video. And then it slowed down a bit, right? That was right. the reason. I did not want to go back. I was like so turned off to going back to his store. And I didn't I didn't want to make I I didn't want to make a video on it because I didn't want to bash this company. I'm at a point right now where I could care less. But I right. I um so a few a week goes by, right? Um somebody messages me on Instagram. And the guy says, hey, your boy Max sold me fake diamonds. You look like you're right. I'm right? Yeah, it's not diamonds. They're not, yeah, and even under even under the loop, they didn't look real. Yeah. Fake. It's not. Not real. No. <laughs> yeah. Great. The diamonds turned out to be cubic zirconias. So he reaches out to me. And I'm like, oh shit, normally I would make content out of this. What do I do instead? As a friend of Trax NYC, I message Trax and I say, yo, Max, somebody hit me up and made a video about you saying that you sold them fake diamonds. Mistakes happen, I understand. Would you like to address it yourself? It doesn't have to be on my channel. It could be on your channel because you have a bigger following. Just trying to help you out and just bring awareness to this. Max sends me an audio recording. He goes... Yo, Brandon, that's a Gucci dial. The the dial is made by Gucci, bro. I didn't make the fucking dial, bro. Mistake, it happens. What's wrong with you, man? I'm like, this guy really caught an attitude with me when I'm trying to help him out. I sent him a paragraph, bro. I sent him a small paragraph, and I sent him an audio message myself. This paragraph, just to sum it up, it wasn't, it wasn't a large paragraph. I said, you ever talk to me like that again, I'm done going to your store. That's exactly what I said. Then I said... First of all, you should be saying thank you to me. I didn't have to do that. I could have made a video saying Tracks NYC sells fake diamonds and I could have got a, a large viewership. I got I could have got a lot of views on that. I didn't do that. I sent it to you as a friend. Max texts me back. He apologizes. Yo, Brandon, I'm sorry, bro. You know what I'm saying? That's just part of my personality. Sometimes I have rough edges. And I'm sorry. I don't know what else to say. That's just what it is for me. It's just a little frustrating for me to see that shit. You know, I have a bunch of frustrations myself, man. You know, it's frustrating for me to see this Gucci watch and this guy and have to explain it. I'm sorry, man. I don't know. I'm sorry. I ignore it. It wasn't, it wasn't like an apology, like I'm not going to do it again. It's, just a, it's a part of my personality, like, kind of like whatever. I, did, I, didn't, I didn't answer. Yeah. He, called, he didn't call me like after 30 minutes, like, Hey, Brandon, I just wanted to apologize again. You know, if you want, you could come back to the store and we can address the situation. I said, Max, I'm not interested in that. I sent, the, I sent you the video so you, Mickey, and all your your whole crew can decide what to do about it. I'm just making it aware so the video doesn't rack up on views and you can just address it before it gets out of hand. That's it. And so he's like, all right, thank you, man. Okay, you could come, you know, you can let me know when you want to drop another video or whatever. So... I, I, after that conversation, I didn't go back for a while. I, I kind of just, I just didn't go back for like about a week or two. And Max, I asked him on, and it's in the Q and A video. I asked him about what his relationship status is. And Max admitted on camera that he's had, he has trouble with women. Are you in a relationship now? That's not one of the questions. That's mm, not yeah, somewhat, something <laughs> like that. I mean, you know, I'm trying to get some space from, from women. They are, they're terrible. All right. Dumb. That women give him problems and he has relationship issues. I'm like, listen, it's, 
<laughs> like you have issues everywhere, dude. Like, and, and, right. and let me tell you something. This, I wouldn't say this. I wouldn't make this up. Like, it's just I really wish this wasn't true. I wanted my plan when I first met Max. I wanted to go to the store because I, I, I wanted to just go to Tracks NYC pretty much every single day and just record. And I told Max this could benefit you and benefit me because one, you don't have to pay me, and I'm one of the things that Max Max said his main goal was he wanted to be as famous as possible, and. Um, I was like, yo, I could just keep making videos on you like every single day. I could come up with a new topic. I'm very creative. I love doing it. It's fun. And it'll yeah. benefit you. All you have to do is show up and I will record, edit, come up with the ideas. And all y'all have to do is just be there. Max loved it. I loved it. But I was like, hell no, not happening. Like it is like I I I feel like shit every time I left the store. Like after the first time. Maybe even at the, even at the second time wasn't so bad, but after that, like I was just like, Ugh. I don't want to see this guy again. Like that was just, I was like, and and I'm like, what is the point of me going there? I'm not doing it for money. Right. Am I clout chasing? I was like sitting there thinking with myself, like, what is the point of me going over there? Right. I'm doing it for my subscribers because I feel like they like to see him. Right. And, um, I was like, I don't care at this point. I mean, I'm not saying. Where am I right now? Am I saying that I'm not going to go back to tracks my season? I don't know. I really don't know. If Max happens to see this video and he gets offended, listen, he knows this about himself. I told him all of this already over the phone. He right. knows this. If this is something that he chooses not to work on, expect to lose friends. I mean, this is this is what's going to happen. Because that was genuine. I wasn't asking or trying to get anything out of him. But no, he wanted to make me mad. Right. Now I'm not going to the store. So, right. Wow. But it's, it's, it sucks, man. I really wanted that to work out. I really wanted that, that to work out, but I'm not. I really wanted that to work out, but I'm not going to be abused. I know in the future he's probably going to disrespect me again. So I was just kind of like, I didn't want to, I, I really didn't want to go back to the store that often. And this is something that not everybody knows until now, because I'm telling you. Because I was, I was like, because one side of me is like, it's a good opportunity to you know because i'm working with him should i overlook it because the one question that i always ask i'm like why does everybody let tracks talk down to like why did they sit there and let him talk down to them right and I, I was asking my friend this right i was like yo i don't understand why did they sit there and and like let him disrespect them and my yeah. friend asked me why are you letting him do it to you i was like uh yeah probably for the same reason so i was like you know i if it was a regular person talking to me this way, I would have immediately cut them off without hesitation. But because like he has a big brand or whatever, I, you know, I got excited and I was like, I kind of overlooked it. And I knew for a fact that like it, on a regular circumstances, I wouldn't hang out with a guy like that. And it sucks to say this. I really hate to say that. And I really want, I was so excited. I really like making videos. One of the previous videos that I really enjoyed doing was a Rolex video. I showed foot up. Uh, I took fake Rolexes to track some IC and I asked all the employees. I have more fun making videos with his employees than I do with him. Right. And that's my, I, I made videos with Mickey and his employees. They're so cool, man. Those guys are really fun to like, th those guys are really fun to to talk to and stuff. Ma Max himself is just, I just, I just couldn't, it's, he's difficult to be around. I actually spoke to Mickey about it and Mickey agreed with me, but he was, you know, but he didn't really want to say too much. He was just like, yeah, I, I understand he's difficult to be around. I overlook it. To me, I'm like, hell no, I'm not going to work for that. You know? <laughs> and even then, even if he offered me like a good salary, like, I don't know, 150, 200,000, I wouldn't do that. It's, that's crazy. I, I can't, I can't, it's difficult to, it's difficult being around him. You yeah. gave people an inside look to this world. Like when the gem expert said that Max was a sociopath or whatever terminology he used, yeah, I, was I like, want to agree with it. I was like, I, like I, in my head, I was agreeing with it, but I'm like, right. I don't, I'm not going to agree with it on camera. I'm trying to like remain friends with Max. Right. But I'm like, man, what the, I'm tired of being fake. It gets tiring, bro. Right. I'm like, I'm like, what's the point? Like, I'm not gaining anything out of this. I'm not, he's not paying me a salary. And even if he was, it's like, what does that say about my character? I want to be as honest as possible. People, the reason why people don't change is because people make excuses for them. Oh, it's tracks on my seat. It's a good opportunity. It's this and that. He could, you know, I, I'm like, and this is not just with tracks, it's for anybody. People's abusive behavior or disrespectful behavior doesn't change because people make excuses for them. I don't want to be one of those people. I'm going to say what it is. If you still choose to support Tracks NYC, more power to you. I love Tracks NYC's brand. I love his videos. I love covering the Diamond District. I love Tracks. I don't like Max. 
I like Trax MIC. I'm gonna stay subscribed to him and stuff like that. Um, you know, me and Trax follow each other on Instagram, and it's cool. If he still wants to be friends after this, great. If not, I don't feel like I'm losing much to be honest with you. It's just I don't really care. So that that to me was just it was just it was just really upsetting. Am I gonna tell Joey? The truth, or am I going to tell Joey, I love Trax MIC. It was a great opportunity. I'm so glad he called me. I was very privileged or whatever. Am I going to fake that? I'm like, no, nah, I'm just going to tell the truth. And, you know, I don't care how you edit it. I don't care what thumbnail you use. I'm tired of caring about that kind of stuff. I'm just going to be as authentic as possible. And whatever people want to make out of this video, if you want to feel like I'm cloud chasing, if you would feel like I'm, I'm talking bad about Max, like everybody else, like Danny, Noah, all these other people who probably had an issue with him, if you feel like I'm doing what they're doing, allegedly by just... Cloud chasing and trying to just use his name to slander him. Go right ahead and think that. Um, that's not the case. I I was not an employee with Max. I didn't he I I never got not one paycheck out of him. I I I didn't call him asking him for anything. He called me asking me to delete a video. That's really what it comes down to. You posted a video kind of reacting to the interview that I did at Tracks NYC, and I read some of your comments, and one of your comments, somebody said, I forgot the name of this this person. But the person said the reason why Trax reached out to Brandon in the first place was because Brandon was posting videos that could cause Trax MIC a lawsuit. I didn't reply to it. I don't even think you replied to it. But I was like, that could somewhat be true. But I didn't say anything oh. about it. And I didn't want to believe that to be true either. Because I'm like, if I didn't post that video as Trax MIC a racist, would he have re reached out to me at all? Probably not. I have to like you as a person to want to... Because he wanted me to quit my job and basically all my content would have to revolve around him. Right. Not not happening. Not right. happening. And I was always fair. When I was at Tracks NYC, Eddie has hit me up and he was like, hey, ask Max if we could collab and stuff like that. I was like, I'm not going to ask him that. Max doesn't like you. Personally, I don't give a fuck about Harlem Link at this point. We're only helping his brand out. Like, I'm not going right. to do that. I was trying to stay fair on both ends. Every time I bring up Eddie's name, excuse me, every time I bring up Eddie's name over at Tracks NYC, this guy just, he fucking hates Eddie. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to try to... I'm, whatever I do with Eddie will be with Eddie. Whatever I do with Trax will be with Trax. I'll separate the two. Even if I like one more than the other, I'd, I stay as fair as possible. I, I stay completely neutral in every video. Any content that I made, I made sure that it was only to benefit Trax NYC. I didn't make any content to slander him or to swindle him. I wanted to make content that was going to benefit him because that's what I told him, and I'm a man of my word. I'm right. also a man of my word when I say, if you disrespect me again, I'm going to step to the side and you're going to run headfirst into the wall. If I'm not going to be in front of you, you can fight with yourself. I'm at a point where I kind of just want to be done with him. Hey, Brandon, listen, you know, you're doing great. I appreciate you. Big shout out to Brandon. A week after my first interview with Trax, I had my first interview with Eddie. Okay. The first time I met Eddie, Eddie from Harlem Blink, it was a complete opposite.